I'm Dr. Rob Robertson, and I want to add my welcome to all of you who are attending the virtual convention of For Life Research, a company which I've been associated with since its inception in late 1998. As a matter of fact, I became the first For Life distributor at that time, and my son, Rob III, became the second. I am a Gold International, a member of the President's Club, and I've been a member of the Health Sciences Advisory Board since the board was established. Our board has chosen happiness and its relationship to our physical health. During the past year with the pandemic infecting so many throughout the world, I can think of no subject which is more timely or appropriate. It has long been said that happiness is the best medicine. Happiness is very subjective, but we need to make an effort to define exactly what traits make a happy person. A happy person feels joy and has the sense that their life is beneficial and has meaning. A happy individual possesses a feeling of optimism and feels that the glass is half full rather than half empty. Happy people are enthusiastic and have a sense of humor. They feel gratitude and have hope for the future. Happy people often experience spontaneous, in the moment, unexpected waves of happiness, love, and excitement. And a smile comes naturally to happy people. While happiness may sometimes be difficult to define, a simple emoji has been universally adopted throughout the world, which everyone understands to mean happiness. We all possess certain chemicals in our brains which affect our emotions and therefore our happiness. We can call these chemicals happy brain chemicals. While all of our brain chemicals have a function in our state of happiness, each plays a different role in our emotional well-being. Dopamine is known as the feel-good brain chemical. The brain releases it when we eat food which we crave, as an example, or when we perform any function which gives us a feeling of satisfaction. Serotonin is a mood stabilizer. It provides a feeling of well-being and happiness. Endorphins give us relief from physical pain and magnify pleasurable feelings. Oxytocin is sometimes referred to as the love hormone. It is associated with pleasurable physical contact and increases when individuals develop empathy and trust in relationships. There are activities which we can engage in which can increase our brain's happy chemicals. We can increase our levels of dopamine by completing a task providing self-care, eating something delicious, and simply by celebrating little wins in our lives. Serotonin levels can be elevated by such things as meditation, exercising, like running, exposing ourselves to the sun, taking a nature walk, swimming, or cycling. Endorphins are beneficially influenced by laughter, by utilizing essential oils, such as for life's essential oils, watching something humorous, or eating dark chocolate. Oxytocin can be boosted by playing with a dog or baby, holding hands, hugging, or giving someone a compliment. The mind-body or brain-body is the connection between a person's thoughts, feelings, and behavior, and their physical well-being. A state of happiness has been shown in multiple studies to have a major impact on one's physical health. So let's discuss some of the benefits to our physical health which can occur if we achieve a state of happiness. A 2017 study of over 70,000 older women found that those with the highest levels of optimism had a 38% lower risk of death from heart disease and a 39% lower risk of stroke-related deaths over an eight-year period than those with a more negative attitude. Here's an interesting study, which was conducted in my home state of Kentucky. The study involved a group of nuns and was able to correlate their degree of a positive outlook on longevity. 
90% of the happiest individuals were still alive at age 85, where only 34% of the least cheerful were. A study in England of individuals 52 to 79 years old revealed that happy people were 35% less likely to die than their counterparts over a five-year period. A 2006 study was conducted involving 81 graduate students who received a hepatitis B vaccine. After receiving the vaccine, the students were measured on nine criteria for happiness. Those who scored the highest regarding happiness doubled their immune system's antibody response compared to those who scored the lowest. Happiness increases stress-related hormones in the body. Stress-related hormones increase the amount of glucose or blood sugar being released into the bloodstream, increasing one's blood sugar. 400 individuals with chronic pain were surveyed to determine if they felt that their life had meaning, which is a measure of happiness. Those who felt positive about their situation reported that their pain had less impact on their lives and they were less distressed about their pain than those who felt that their life had lost meaning. Digestive health has a relation to a person's level of happiness and there is a reason. Unhappy people have increased levels of stress and stress has a major influence on one's digestive health. Stress can trigger gastrointestinal issues like constipation, diarrhea, and indigestion. And over an extended period, conditions like irritable bowel syndrome or other GI symptoms can occur. We have just discussed stress regarding blood sugar levels and digestive health. Actually, happiness and some types of stress are complementary because certain stresses in our lives are beneficial. Good stress is what we feel when we are excited. Examples are when we ride a coat roller coaster or complete successfully for a promotion at work. Our pulse increases and certain hormones surge, but this emotion doesn't produce worry or fear. However, regarding our brain-body relationship, harmful stress can be thought of as anti-happiness. Harmful stresses occur when we reach a point in life when we feel overwhelmed or unable to cope as a result of pressures which are simply not manageable. Studies have shown that over 75% of all doctor's office visits are for stress-related ailments or complaints. There are multiple harmful stresses which we encounter as we navigate through our lives. Many of these are related to our jobs, such as being unhappy with our occupation. Other stresses include working abnormally long hours, working under unsafe conditions, having no chance of a promotion, facing discrimination or harassment, or having to make speeches or presentations. All of these work-related stresses can cause unhappiness, which may negatively influence our well-being. There are life stresses which can also be harmful. Examples include the death of a loved one, a divorce, being terminated from a job, having a financial crisis, suffering an injury or chronic illness, experiencing emotional trauma, or living through a natural disaster. Harmful stresses adversely affect multiple systems within our bodies. Chronic stress can cause harmful effects on one's brain. Chronic stress can increase mental illness. And stress actually changes the brain's structure because stress can kill brain cells and therefore stress can actually shrink the brain. Stress also affects short-term memory and memory retrieval. A recent study in the British Medical Journal Lancet involving 293 participants revealed chronic stress was shown to increase certain white blood cells in our immune system, which influence inflammation. Finally, stress can even cause skin conditions due to the overproduction of oil in skin glands, which causes acne, which can itself cause increased stress, particularly in teens. We have established that our emotions created by our state of happiness or conversely by stress influence 
our mind-body relationship. Let me close by making one last comment regarding happiness and how happiness can positively affect one's life. As I stated at the beginning of this presentation, I have been involved with For Life for over two decades, since the first days of the company. My relationship with For Life has provided me with much happiness. It has given me the opportunity to introduce scientifically developed products, which has benefited countless individuals throughout the world. And this has given me satisfaction. It has provided me with happiness. It has provided me with the opportunity to develop lasting relationships with the talented and dedicated executives and staff who have grown for life into one of the largest and most respected companies in the nutritional supplement arena. And this too has provided happiness. For life has allowed me to meet and get to know the most wonderful group of individuals who as distributors have helped spread the for life philosophy of science, success, and service throughout the world. Again, a source of happiness. And finally, For Life has provided me with a financial opportunity for which I will ever be thankful. If you're seeking happiness in your life, I can think of no more satisfying quest than becoming part of For Life's mission of providing science, success, and service, not only for yourself, but for all that you can reach in telling the For Life story, because happiness is indeed the best medicine. For all of you attending our virtual convention, I wish you happiness now and for the rest of your life. Thanks. This has been Rob Robertson for Life. <laughs>